scholarship at our local high school. So 30 seconds of background about us. We are the oldest and youngest of five. This is our family, Puerto Rico or something. Swimming at a, we're here in Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, you know, typical, if, you, if you've seen the TV show The Office, that's like 10 minutes from where we grew up and it's a pretty accurate depiction of the area. You know, lower to middle, middle class, working class parents, public high school, about 100 to 120 kids per class. And you know, we felt really lucky for some elements of it, really unlucky for some others. So this is our high school, Yale Myers High in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And it's, the school district itself has recently been featured in Michael Moore's, what was it? Um, one, of the, one of the Michael Moore corruption. For blah, blah, blah. how corrupt the, one of the judges for the juvenile detention center was getting cutbacks for sending kids to juvie, and that's, you just knew that. So, there's also been huge scandals where the friend's father of mine that I graduated with is in prison for 15 years for selling teaching jobs. So, a lot of nepotism, a lot of not so great teachers, but in addition to that, there was a few exceptional teachers that we actually named the scholarship we created after them, just to honor them, and one of them is on the next slide. So this is me in the background, and this is our high school math teacher, Mr. Sam Elias. We're calling it the Butwin Elias Science and Technology Award, the best award. And this was not, I mean, this was probably what, like one of 10 kayak or canoe trips we took with him on the weekends just for fun. Just one of those teachers who not only is fun, but like you learn more in his class than you do in the sum total of all your other classes in a subject for like six years and you know between us and our friends we've gone through some of the best undergrad and grad programs in the country and pretty universally agree that Mr. Butwin and Mr. Elias are two of the top five teachers any of us have ever had undergrad or otherwise so we, we thought they really stood out and wanted to do something to to kind of honor them. And, and even in addition to their teaching Mr. Elias was the chess coach at our high school too so I had him Eighth periods for chess that we play till hours after class ended, and he would just stay around and help out, and just was an awesome guy overall. And the reason why we made it so the overall structure of it is, is it's a contest, right, where the coolest one gets some money. And that throughout my whole career, Mr. Elias has had little contests within class where bungee Barbie, where you get the number of rubber bands for a set height, and then whoever gets closest to the ground wins a prize. And there was also another one when I was in seventh grade where it was a Rube Goldberg, Goldberg uh, mousetrap contraption to pop a balloon. And the coolest one got a pizza party at the end of it. And so part of the competition that I just got into last year was the Intel Cornell Cup, where I built and designed these robots and just applied to it sort of on a whim. It was a contest, so I ended up doing some really cool stuff for it. And those are the four robots for it. And we basically structured it such that each of the individual projects writes an instructable. If you go to the next slide. Yeah, so um, we'll just leave this picture of Adam up for a second, too. Um, we wanted to encourage some things that you don't always learn in school, whether high school or college. One of which was the power of just applying for things, even if your project isn't perfect, and you know, putting your name out there and publishing. So. We had students to enter this scholarship contest, straight cash, no strings attached, basically to build a cool project or do whatever you want with as a reward for building and publishing an instructable that we found particularly interesting. So this is so that this was all Adam's idea and he's my youngest brother, so if he's doing it, I kinda had to get involved. And then from there I was able to kinda cajole some of my friends who are like in their normal careers and making money now or one of them at least, in joining. So we put in $500 each, got a third guy, so it's $1,500. And let's talk about some of the projects. Oh, actually, the impacts now of the scholarship. <laughs> We're messing up the order a little bit, sorry about that. But uh, part of it, Make actually sponsored it by sending a year's worth of subscriptions to Make Magazine. And Mr. Elias has, I talked to him yesterday and he said he's set for life for teaching examples. Like he had no idea that Make existed, 
has already set up a alcohol powered two liter rocket to demonstrate D equals RT in the top of his classroom. <laughs> And he said that he didn't light his ceiling on fire, and him and another teacher are both taking projects from MAKE already and incorporating it into their curriculum. And this, we started this two months ago, and they got magazines a month ago. <laughs> so this so, is, you know, it's really easy. I live here, Adam lives in Seattle. It's really easy to be in our bubble of, oh yeah, of course everybody knows about the latest 30 3D printers that came out last week. But it's important to remember that, you know, the future is not evenly distributed yet, so little things like sending a magazine subscription to your old high school can have a much bigger impact than you'd think. So let's talk about now some of the student projects. This is, I think, my favorite one. It's an Archimedes screw. This was two high school students made this in a poorly outfitted. This isn't like on a shop bot. This is, these were carved by hand. And um, they, documented, they did a pretty good job of documenting it. It's published on Instructables, so now you know, other students can look and see this. Hopefully they will have the same experience as we have publishing, which is you kind of get addicted to the feedback. Yeah, it's no financial thing, but it's cool to see that other people care about your projects, no matter how small, and occasionally comment on them. And so one of the other projects was the testing the effect of acid rain on painted butterfly larva. The girl ordered butterfly larva from Carolina Scientific and sprayed, she ordered six total, two were sprayed with mineral water, two with tap water, and then two with acid rain that she measured the pH on and then documented how well the larva developed into actual butterflies as her project. <laughs> and again, these are high school students, these are not class projects, this is a teacher that they know told them about or they just saw in the on the intercoms, we still have an intercom in our old high school, morning announcements that there was this scholarship they could apply for. This guy built, it's not the best documented, but it's pretty cool. He built an Oreo pump gun. Our original role with this was no pictures of yourself, no name associated. We wanted to do it like an orchestra audition in that you have no idea who's applying because it is a relatively small town. We didn't want to see like friends of friends, nephews or whatever. Um, we violated that role a little bit. We asked our high school teacher, Mr. Elias, like the background on some of these kids. This guy apparently went from not attending school on Tuesdays to they have to essentially kick him out at the end of the Saturday engineering program that Mr. Elias is running. He's, I mean, he's, as many of you probably have, as we have, he's becoming addicted to, to making things. And so the final one was sort of a chemistry experiment with sodium polyacrylate, if I'm saying that correctly where mucking out horse stalls is really difficult for the urine, apparently, and so this chemical is what's used in diapers, to, and it absorbs 300 times its weight in water. And so the picture to the right is it before being exposed to water, and then it literally blows up and it absorbs all of the urine to make cleaning out a lot easier. And that we, left, we purposely left the projects completely open-ended just to see what the kids were interested in doing and giving them this free space to create whatever they wanted. And as you can see, we got a lot of different ones. <laughs> so um, in terms of impact, this is, again, these same teachers were coaching wrestling teams and you know, really just across the board, encouraging people to have this open, positive spirit of inquiry that extends far beyond like, okay, let's, let's do our AP tests, let's maximize our SAT scores. Um, and again, these aren't like necessarily for world-changing projects. It's more getting this started. It's more, you know, what's the, what's the minimum viable thing we can do to have a little bit of an impact? Like, we're far from done paying off our own student loans. We don't make like millions of dollars. We didn't even bother. It was like several hundred bucks more than we wanted to spend to even set up a charity for it. We literally just emailed a teacher who we had in high school. And we're like, hey, we want to do this thing for 500 bucks each. Can you post an announcement of it? Adam set up a, like, bought a domain name, put up a crappy one-page website and some application instructions, and, you know, it's for this year. Adam will go to, to announce what we're doing to, like, actually give the award, and, you know, we think it'll be a lot more impactful as it grows from there. And so this is just a picture of my high school, or my freshman year Frisbee team, and the seniors there, four of them are doctors, Two of them are PhDs in physics, three of them are working in banking, 
and it's not that hard to set this up. You literally just have to email or call your old high school and write an application for whatever you want them to do. We liked having it open-ended. You could have it that only the best chess player gets to apply, only the best wrestler gets to apply. It's just really easy, just if you do it, it's just really impactful, something that's easy to set up and has hopefully some good benefits for the kids. And so, more broadly, I don't think these guys should be the only ones having fun with this. Like, you don't need to have billions of dollars, and you don't need to have a $10 million innovation prize to encourage people to do cool shit. Like, you can do it for however little you want. You can make it whatever you want. I mean, and for any teachers here, we, you know, I did this because my little brother kind of shamed me into it. It would have been great if we had gotten an email from a teacher a couple years after graduating college. Like, that's, that's actually probably the only person who I can think of. Like, these two teachers are two of the only people I can think of who could have, could, other than my brother, ask me to do this. Like, just not pushy. Just like, hey, have you thought about, like, giving a couple hundred bucks to the kid who does the coolest project or something? That would have been really impactful for us. So any teachers, you know, reach out to some of your former students. That's, like, less than most of us spend on coffee in a couple months. It's not, you know, it's not that big of a deal when you think about it. And if you put yourself in the student's shoes, like, imagine if in high school somebody had given you 500 bucks for a project that you came up with and published of your own volition, like, how would that impact you down the line? Not only in terms of, like, money to buy, like, better parts for a nicer potato cannon next time, but, like, that's a really healthy message, I think, to send kids, especially when so much of education is focused on can we get kids to pass the next test? So yeah, that's that's about it. Um, thanks for listening. If you have any questions, we're happy we're happy to answer them. How are we going to pick a winner? That's a that's a good question. Uh, so what we did is we sent out to friends and family each of the applicants and the rubric that we had sent out to the students. And some of them followed it closely, some of them didn't, and so we're basically going from coolest and sort of broadly defined best executed. Another and another thing we're probably going, we haven't announced yet, um, you go there in what, like two weeks? It's the 23rd that we're presenting it. So don't tell them, but we're probably, because there were four entries and we have $1,500 to fund it, we're probably going to do like first prize gets most of the money, and then all three others get it, and Adam can, like, tell everyone, hey, apply for stuff like this. Every single applicant just got some cash. Like, you know, I think that that's a message that took me to, like, recently to figure out the importance of just, you know, putting your stuff out there. Any other questions? So go start these. There's, I mean, we had no excuse not to. You probably have even less of an excuse than we do. I mean, it's it's a pretty impactful way to spend a couple months worth of coffee money. Uh, so the question was, what are our future plans? Like, how much longer will we offer this? I mean, you know, I'm kind of an independent entrepreneur. Adam works at a big company, so. I mean, it's kind of like if you step back, it's kind of tough to think of, you know, I think we're going to get ourselves addicted to it. I know we're going to shame our three other siblings who are largely in grad school and about to be making more than we are. We'll certainly shame them into participating on the same terms. And um, yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, hopefully we can get people goaded into this all over the place. So certainly the next next couple of years, I mean, and I, ideally if other people start these, we can coordinate where the best of the best gets to come to Maker Fair and give a presentation or whatever else we decide for it. So there is, you can compete after your individual high school that we'd ideally like to set up at some point. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good question. So did we use, like, our own high school projects? Yeah, did you say, hey, I started this maker career, this maker post-college, like, my high school, did you use that? Oh, we're post-college now. We just, we just started this this year, so if we had started, we would have. But you raise a good point that, like, kids are freaking out about test scores, and, you know, 
the schools we got into, it was largely chance. Like we had pretty much, he had a little higher, but we had close to the same SATs and everything and applied to a bunch of the same schools. One gets into one, one gets into the other. So there's a lot of randomness and it's super important for kids to do something to differentiate themselves that doesn't suck, like that is not just driving them crazy from studying more. So yeah. Exactly, yeah. Th these could be the most positive way for kids. Building things that they want to build for fun is a really good way to, to differentiate yourself. And when I go there next week, I'm going to encourage them to list this on any application they fill out for college. If they need a recommendation, I'm probably going to offer to give that for the cool ones, but <laughs> it's just something else that differentiates you. Like, it's a lot better than a test score, in my mind. And, you know, it's a lot... Again, it's really extensible to the rest of your life. Like, college only matters while you're there. And then it's kind of like, okay, are you going to stop learning or are you going to keep doing cool stuff? And, you know, if you're building projects you want to anyways, you're pretty likely to continue them. Thanks, y'all. And we'll be around if anybody has any questions later. Thanks.